Welcome to this tutorial we are doing on basic skeletal anatomy today, focusing on the bones of our forearm, including the radius and ulna. And the first thing we'll want to do is be able to distinguish uh, between these bones, distinguish them from each other. So I'll just label each one now, including the directional terms. So first with our directional terms, we have the proximal end of the bones, and the distal ends of the bones. Now in red here, I've just highlighted our radius. Our radius being the bone that we see on the lateral side, if we are looking uh, from the anatomical position. And the ulna we will see medially in the purple here. So we have our anterior and posterior once again with the ulna on the medial side and radius on the lateral. Starting with our radius, let's have a look at a few features we will see. The first feature I've highlighted here in red is the head of our radius. The head of the radius is going to form an articulation with the capitulum of the humerus, and I highlighted the capitulum in the last video, so it's part of the elbow joint. And the head of the radius will also be surrounded by the annular ligament of the ulna, which we will also see very soon. Now just below the head of the radius here in green, I've highlighted the radial neck. And we don't really need to say too much more about the radial neck apart from uh, to know where it is. And we always know there's going to be a neck below the head of the bone. Again, just below the neck on the medial side of the radius, we are going to see the radial tuberosity. The radial tuberosity in pink just here is going to be a point from which we have tendon attachments. And we'll see that all over the body, any kind of bony process that's sticking out like this or uh, protruding is usually a point for a ligament or muscle uh, tendon attachment. Moving right down to the distal end of our radius here, highlighted in blue, we can see the styloid process of the radius. And we also have a styloid process on our ulna, which we'll get to. Now the styloid processes are once again just for tendon attachment. And as I've said in all the other videos in the later musculoskeletal videos, we'll talk about exactly what our tendons attached to these uh, bones. In pink here, between the ulna and radius, you can see that I have just highlighted this very large structure that is going to make up our interosseous membrane. Now the interosseous membrane, or sometimes named intermediate radioulnar joint, is a membrane made from fibrous tissue that is going to separate the muscles of our forearm into anterior and posterior compartments. So we do actually classify it as a joint, uh, despite its somewhat obscure functionality. Moving on to the structures of our ulna now, the first one we'll see at the distal end of the bone is the head of the ulna. And once again, like the head of the radius, it's going to be an articular surface. So we can see that highlighted in green down the bottom. Now the next structure we're going to see is the styloid process of our ulna. And I'll highlight that as I'm going here, otherwise it might be a bit hard to see. The styloid process of the ulna is much smaller than the styloid process of the radius, and I've just highlighted it in yellow there. Once again, like with the radius, it's going to be a point of muscle or ligament attachment. If we move back up to the proximal end of the bone now, we are going to see the olecranon process on the posterior surface of our ulna. Now the olecranon process is going to sit in the olecranon fossa of the humerus and is going to form a large bony projection and it will be uh, the, the bump that you'll feel on the back of your elbow. So I'll just show that quickly up here. We can see it mainly on the posterior but it extends slightly around that medial side of the ulna as well. Now, just on the anterior side of the ulna here, I've highlighted in orange the trochlear notch. The trochlear notch being the 
a depression in the ulna where we're going to sit the trochlea of the humerus. And I'll just write that here. It articulates with the trochlea. And below that, just in purple, I've highlighted the coronoid process. Now the coronoid process is a portion of bone that kind of juts out anteriorly. So it's a projection of bone that juts out anteriorly and is going to be a point of tendon attachment for a few of the muscles of our forearm. Okay, we are nearing the end of our video now and the end of the structures we have on the bones of our forearm. So the end is inside. We have our radial notch, which is going to be right up here. And the radial notch is just the uh, ligament attachment point where we are going to attach our annular ligament. So our annular ligament starts from our ulna and is going to surround the head of the radius, as I said earlier in the video. And I'll just draw this up here as well. So we've got the annular ligament surrounding the head of the radius here, and we'll see it from the posterior side as well. So that's our annular ligament that starts from the radial notch. And the last structures that we're going to need to be able to name here on the bones of our forearm are the proximal radio ulnar joint and the distal radio ulnar joint. Now I'll just do them both at the same time because they have the same function at both ends of the bone. So we've got proximal radio ulnar joint and distal radio ulnar joint and I'll just highlight the proximal here first is going to be here. Now we know a joint is where two bones articulate so we know they're going to be where the radius and ulna touch. So the distal portions of the distal radio ulna joint at the bottom there. And together they are both articulation points. That's going to cover all of the structures we need to know of the bones of our forearm. Once again I hope this has been helpful and I'll put up a worksheet to help you memorize it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.